So, you see last uh, lecture we were looking at uh, the notion of dimension ok and uh, 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 we noticed that there is a notion of dimension from the topological point of view that is the, <coughs> the definition of uh, dimension of a topological space and then there is also the notion of uh, cool dimension of a ring ok and uh, somehow these two are related in the sense that the dimension of a uh, uh, for example the dimension of affine n space the topological dimension of affine n space is the same as the cruel dimension of the ring of functions on affine n space ok. So, uh, so let me recall uh, again to uh, refresh your memory and also so that you uh, feel a little comfortable about things uh, let me recall what was going on. So, um, see on the so we have as usual the geometric side and we have on this side the commutative algebraic side and here uh, we if you take affine space uh, over k affine n space over k this is just k n k cross k cross k n times uh, given the Zariski topology where of course k is an algebraically closed field ok as usual you can always think of it as complex numbers if you if you want to be very concrete. So the in that case this will be just c n the n copies of c given the Zariski topology and then the ring of functions uh, uh, so uh, the association that I am interested in is true called uh, is given by the uh, symbol a of uh, a, a variety or an algebraic set ok and <coughs> it is defined only for varieties properly uh, this is well this should be thought of as giving you the ring of functions. So you have the space here and here you have its ring of functions. So, so on this side you have the space uh, <coughs> and on this side you have rings of functions ok. So, if you take <coughs> affine space of course what kind of functions uh, functions are course polynomial functions we are only interested in algebraic functions polynomial functions. So, if you take this this is going to be <coughs> this is k x 1 etcetera ok and the fact is that you see uh, what I want to say is that there is a there is also uh, an association that goes from this side to this side ok which makes this <coughs> again a bijective correspondence ok. So, uh, again you know this is another uh, instance of uh, you know the the interaction between algebraic geometry and commutative algebra that there is always a dictionary which goes from the 
geometric side to the commutative algebraic side and goes back and forth. So, see initially you know we had such a dictionary where we had taken on this side uh, for example uh, we have seen it in other contexts for example on this side if you took you know uh, uh, closed subsets that is algebraic subsets then uh, what you can get on this side uh, as a bijective correspondence are the radical ideals okay and if you and under this correspondence the irreducible algebraic subsets the irreducible closed subsets they will correspond to prime ideals okay which are of course radical and uh, the of course the points the singleton sets consisting of points they will correspond to the largest ideals which are the maximal ideals largest proper ideals. So that is one correspondence we have already seen and in that correspondence what goes from this side to that side is given a set here you associate the ideal of that subset okay and what goes from there to here as the inverse map is given a uh, uh, an ideal you look at the zero set of the ideal okay and that gave a bijective uh, you know correspondence now rather than going from algebraic sets or varieties to ideals what you do is you go from algebraic sets or varieties on this side to rings of functions okay. So that, that is the change in the point of view but the fact is that again you get a nice bijective correspondence and uh, so let me explain see what is happening is uh, see if you, you why this is so important is because if I take uh, uh, dimension topological of a n this is of course n okay and that is just a translation of the fact that the dimension the cruel dimension of this polynomial ring is is n. So the topological dimension of a space here of course when I say space here actually what I am meaning is uh, a variety here. A variety means an irreducible closed subset of A n. In particular, A n itself is an irreducible closed subset of itself. Okay, so this is the biggest possible variety in A n. And if you take any variety here, then you can associate to it its ring of functions. Okay, and the dimension of the variety will be the same as the cruel dimension of its ring of functions. Okay, so <coughs> what I want uh, you to understand is that if I take x uh, variety, a fine variety, okay, then you know x is of the form z of uh, some prime ideal, okay, because you know uh, if, if I if a variety uh, I mean if an, if an algebraic sub an algebraic subset is always given a 0 set of an ideal and uh, if the that algebraic subset is irreducible if and only if the radical of the given ideal is prime. So in particular uh, and of course taking the 0 set of an ideal and the 0 set of its radical uh, does not create any uh, changes the 0 set of an ideal is same as the 0 set of its radical. So any irreducible closed subset of a fine space is always given by the 0 set of a prime ideal okay and of course you know this prime ideal is unique it is unique under that bijective correspondence between irreducible closed sub varieties I mean irreducible closed subsets in A n and prime ideals of the polynomial ring. So the fact is if you take a if you take a, a fine variety like this then what is it that you are going to get on this side what is it that you are going to get on this side you are going to get the 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 space of the ring of functions algebraic functions on x okay and the ring of algebraic functions on x will be uh, x is of course z of p and in fact it is actually a of an 
by uh, by p it is just it this is just k x1 etc xn by p this is what it is and uh, so let me draw a line like this because this is this statement is for an now i am making a statement for any uh, affine variety uh, closed inside an okay then for any variety the ring of functions is defined like this and then you again see that the dimension the topological dimension of the variety uh, these two are equal here also the dimension the topological dimension of the variety will be the same as the cruel dimension of its ring of functions this will happen. So, so I, I this so this is so I, I want that so this is a generalization of this this is a generalization of this statement which is true for all affine space and I also want to tell you what is this this arrow that is coming in the other direction okay that arrow is uh, is actually max spec that is the arrow that is going in this direction. So let me explain that so let me explain uh, uh, let us keep this diagram as the basic diagram that we want to understand and let me expand let me expand upon this okay. So the first thing that I want to explain is well uh, 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 just to recall how did you get uh, the topological dimension is equal to the cruel dimension uh, the topological dimension of a n to be equal to the cruel dimension of the polynomial ring that is because the topological dimension is supposed to be the you take uh, uh, you take chains of uh, strictly increasing chains of irreducible closed subsets okay and then you take the largest possible such chain and subtract one from that that is the topological dimension if at all it is finite okay you have to take large if it is not finite then the largest possible will be infinite and then it will become infinite dimension okay. So how does one define the di top dimension of a topological space you simply write out and uh, you try to look at existence of a chain of irreducible closed subsets okay irreducible closed subsets which are contained uh, each one contained in the next try to look at such a chain and try to look at the chain being strict namely that there are no repetitions in successive members of the chain and among such chains try to take uh, maximum uh, the maximal uh, length ones namely the ones with have as many terms as possible and you if this maximum is a finite number okay you take away one from that that will be the topological dimension okay. Now why does that translate it, uh, to this side uh, into into this side uh, to give the cruel dimension that is because any closed subset here corresponds to a radical ideal any irreducible closed subset here corresponds to a prime ideal and if you give me a strictly increasing chain of irreducible closed subsets that will correspond to a strictly decreasing chain of prime ideals okay. So what will happen is that uh, the the fact is that the largest uh, uh, I mean largest in the sense uh, 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 the chain uh, strictly increasing chain of uh, prime ideals of maximal possible length okay is n plus 1 okay. And of course, the easiest thing is you take zero, uh, the start with the zero ideal, then take the ideal generated by one variable x1, then that's contained in the ideal generated by x1 and x2, and then at the ith stage is generated by x1, x2, etc. up to xi, and you go on up to n. This is a strictly increasing chain of uh, prime ideals. Its length is n plus one, and therefore the cruel dimension becomes n. So, so the cruel dimension of a commutative ring is defined to be uh, the supremum of the heights of the prime ideals okay and what is the height of a prime ideal the height of a prime ideal is the maximum possible uh, 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 length of the maximal possible chain 
that you can descending chain strictly descending chain of primes that you can get starting from that prime ideal and then you have to take away one from that okay that is the reason in all these definitions you will see that uh, uh, instead of taking a chain from z1 to zm and uh, taking the supremum and calling this and taking the dimension to be one less than that we rather start with 0 we start with the index 0 okay that is the reason you start with 0 okay anyway so the, the fact is uh, and why is the cruel dimension of this equal to n because the whenever you have a, a finitely generated uh, whenever you have an algebra uh, namely you have a quotient of the polynomial ring which is an integral domain then the cruel dimension of that is actually the trans it is actually the transcendence degree over the over k of its quotient field and the quotient field of this is simply the field of rational functions in n variables okay it is just consists of ratios of polynomials in n variables with the denominator polynomial not equal to 0 and that has tra transcendence degree n it has so uh, transcendence degree is is uh, analogous is is for algebraic independence the analog of dimension for linear independence transcendence just like uh, for linear independence dimension is cardinality of a uh, 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 maximal linearly independent subset for algebraic independence transcendence is the cardinality of a maximal algebraically independent subset okay so it is analogous to what happens in linear algebra. So transcendence degree measures the uh, largest the le it gives you the number of uh, maximum I mean the max the uh, the maximal number of uh, transcendental elements which are algebraically independent from one another okay that is what it gives. So uh, just like dimension of vector space gives you the maximal number of linearly independent elements okay linearly independent vectors. So and the transcendence degree of this the quotient field of this is n which uh, is uh, which is very clear intuitively but you need to prove it okay we using some uh, something from uh, you have to use some field theory to prove it okay and um, now you see so the first thing that I want to explain is uh, why do we define the ring of functions on x like this okay why do we define the ring of functions on x to be the ring of functions on the whole space divided by the ideal of uh, ideal of x so in fact this is I can simply write it as a of uh, a of a n of k divided by i of x i of x is p script uh, script i is the ideal of the given subset okay so i of x is p right um, so here also I can write that p p is equal to i of x okay and uh, so in a way you know previously we were associating to x i of x which is the prime ideal now what you are doing is you are not associating x to the prime ideal but you are associating it to the quotient by that prime ideal instead of looking at the ideals on this side you are looking at quotients by those ideals that is the only difference but the but looking the advantage of looking at quotients by those ideals is the fact that you get rings of functions and why is that that is that is what I am trying to explain it is very very easy see what you do is you see uh, you take you you look at uh, a of x uh, so this is uh, you define it to be functions from uh, uh, so functions uh, from x to k which are given by uh, polynomials by restriction by 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 polynomials so look at this definition so a of x are just functions they are maps from x to k and the the point is that this map is it should be an algebraic function okay which means it should be a polynomial okay and of course what polynomial polynomial in n variables because x is a subset of an and any polynomial in n variables 
is a function on an you can evaluate it at each point of an okay so actually what is happening is when you go from here to here there is something that is already happening so if you apply this condition you see uh, uh, if you if, if you if you apply this definition so if I write a of an this will be functions from an to k which are given by polynomials and you see I if I take the ring of all polynomial functions in n variables then I have a map like this that map is you start with the polynomial in n variables and you uh, use that f to define a function uh, think of c f is here now a polynomial define that as a uh, define use that f to define a function uh, let me uh, if I want to be very strict uh, uh, to distinguish the fact that here I am thinking of f as a polynomial and there uh, instead of the polynomial I am, uh, polynomial I am looking at the function that it defines what I will do is I will put e v f this is evaluation of f evaluation of f from uh, a n to k is a function this is what f goes to what does this do give me any point in a n you simply evaluate that point uh, f at that point you evaluate the polynomial at that point this is the map so you you are just associating f to evaluation of f okay and what you must understand is you see if you take uh, if you take functions like this which are given by polynomials then it is very clear that uh, 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 if you take two such functions their sum is also given by corresponding sums of polynomials right. So if a function is given by a polynomial uh, then a sum of two such functions is also given by sum of the corresponding polynomials product of the two functions will be a function that is given by product of the corresponding polynomials uh, and of course uh, there are constant functions here which correspond to the constant polynomials in, a, in other words what I am saying is that this map is actually a ring homomorphism I am saying this is a ring homomorphism this fellow on this side is actually a ring that is what you must understand take take it here also if you when I say uh, uh, functions are given by polynomials if I have two functions that are given by polynomials then their sum is given by the sum of polynomials okay and the product is given by product of polynomials. So these are all rings these are all rings okay they are commutative rings and they contain constants the constant functions are always there because constant for constant functions come from evaluation of constant polynomial polynomials. So constant functions are there so this is these are k algebras a k algebra is nothing but a, uh, a ring a commutative ring with one with k which is also a vector space over k okay and in such a way that the uh, the multiplication in the ring is compatible with the uh, scalar multiplication lambda times fg is the same as f into lambda times g okay so the vector space structure and the ring structure they are compatible that is what an algebra is okay. So these are these two are both k algebras okay so they are rings and the fact is here also I can start with take a polynomial in n variables I can have this map what is this map this is just f going to evaluation of f restricted to x from x to k it is the same map but you restrict it to the subset x after all because x is a subset of a n you can always restrict the map that is what I mean to say that these are functions which are given by polynomials when you say they are functions given by polynomials they are actually given by restrictions of polynomials that is what this map is okay and what you must again understand in this case also is that this is a ring homomorphism it is also a ring homomorphism because f plus g uh, evaluation of f plus g will be evaluation of f plus evaluation of g 
evaluation of f into g will be evaluation of f into evaluation of g and evaluation of lambda will be just lambda if lambda is a constant polynomial all right so you can see that this is a this is not just a ring homomorphism it also preserves uh, uh, the vector space structure mind you what is there on the left side is also a k algebra this is a commutative ring with one which is also vector space over k and the scalar multiplication uh, is compatible with the ring multiplication if you take a scalar lambda and if you take two ring uh, elements two polynomials f and g then lambda times fg is the same as lambda f times g that is the same as f times lambda g it really does not matter to which factor of a product you multiply a constant you are going to get the same polynomial right in a product of polynomials. So these are actually k algebras so what is happening is that you are getting ring homomorphisms which are actually homomorphisms of k algebras these homomorphisms also satisfy uh, they also satisfy they also they are linear they also respect the vector space structure. So evaluation of f plus g is evaluation of f plus evaluation of g this respects addition it respects multiplication and uh, it, re it 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 uh, respects scalar multiplication okay and evaluation of lambda is lambda this all this is true and this is for f g in uh, uh, the polynomial ring and uh, every lambda in the every constant polynomial okay. So this is <coughs> so in fact instead of writing ring homomorphism let me write k algebra ring homomorphism k algebra means it is a ring homomorphism which is also a k vector space map and uh, the uh, of course the, uh, the algebra uh, the algebra condition is on the rings that the scalar multiplication and the ring multiplication are compatible that is you know you also have lambda times f g is equal to lambda f times g is f times lambda g this is the algebra condition that multiplication by a scalar is is well behaved with respect to multiplication between two ring elements thought of as vectors okay fine so now what I want you to understand is that this map is an isomorphism this map is actually an isomorphism because you see if uh, first of all if you have two polynomials uhhh if so you know to this is a ring homomorphism to show that it is uh, an isomorphism I have to show it is surjective I have to show it is injective to show it is injective I have to show it is kernel of 0 if you want because it is a ring homomorphism it is surjective by definition because my definition of ring of functions is that they are given by polynomial so it is automatically surjective both of these maps are surjective because by definition a function is supposed to be coming from a polynomial so it is so both maps are surjective my dear the only thing that you will have to worry about inject is injectivity okay. So if a function f is such that evaluation at f is 0 okay uh, for uh, every point of a n then that function has to be the 0 polynomial that is <coughs> that is because if it is not the 0 polynomial okay then uh, you should be able to find <coughs> some point where if you evaluate it you will get a non zero uh, uh, element of k okay so that tells you that this is injective and it is already surjective so it is an isomorphism and this is what tells you that this definition is correct that to think of the ring of functions on a n as the polynomial ring is correct because of this <coughs> because of this argument now in the same way if you look at this argument what you will get is <coughs> you will get you will get this actually okay what will happen is that this ring homomorphism is surjective what is the kernel of this ring homomorphism 
this wing homomorphism is not injective it is it has a kernel what is a kernel it is all those functions whose evaluations when restricted to x become 0 but that is precisely all those functions which vanish on x but what are the functions which vanish on x they are precisely the functions in this uh, they are the precisely the polynomials in the ideal of x therefore the kernel of this map is actually the kernel of this map is actually ix and is surjective therefore uh, source modulo the kernel is isomorphic to the target so you get that k x1 etc xn modulo ix is isomorphic to ax by this map okay so these two statements justify that <coughs> this the, these these definitions are correct okay so they give you uh, uh, the naturalness you know behind these two definitions okay so so let me write that down let me write <coughs> so let me write here kernel of evaluation is 0 this is this is so you know this eval this this ring homomorphism is just ev because it's f going to e ev of f and this ring homomorphism is ev restricted to x you evaluate and then restrict to x or you do the evaluation on x so kernel of evaluation is 0 kernel of evaluation restricted to x is ix and so it tells you uh, so this tells you that a of a n is isomorphic to k x1 etc xn and a of x is isomorphic to k x1 etc xn modulo ideal of x okay so what we are what you are doing is that see here by brute force we write like this that is we really to think of the fu functions as uh, uh, think of the polynomials as functions okay but if you want to be more strict you should do it like this this is a stricter way to do it okay so in which you distinguish between the polynomial and the function that it defines by evaluation okay so when you make this distinction you uh, get uh, these isomorphisms not equalities you get isomorphisms in a very nice way and why is that nice because this can also be written mind you this is also equal to k of x1 etc xn modulo ideal of a n because ideal of a n is 0 right so what it tells you is that this formula a x is k x1 etc xn by i x works even for x equal to a n okay so the uh, so you know you you get this uh, you, you know you get this kind of uh, 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 you get a philosophy that if x is embedded in uh, uh, as an irreducible closed subset of a bigger space okay this is irreducible closed in a bigger space then a of x has to be a of y divided by the ideal of x in y in uh, a of uh, y you get something like this okay so uh, so what this tells you is that it tells you that uh, you know the uh, the notion of so the point that you uh, you must appreciate here is that this quotient ring homomorphism this is a this is a quotient homomorphism because it is surjective uh, surjective homomorphism is always a quotient okay because the target is a quotient of the source by the kernel so it is a quotient and the quotient is actually thought of as restriction of functions okay so the model of the story is that the, the in whenever you see a quotient in competitive algebra algebraic geometrically it means that you are restricting functions to a subset closed subset okay that is the that is the geometric meaning of what a quotient is that is what this is okay 
So the quotient homomorphism is just gotten by restricting functions, literally, right? So that that tells you why you know it's correct to define the the uh, ring of functions for a uh, for an affine variety like this. Okay. Of course, we we will really not uh, worry about all the time writing isomorphic to isomorphic to. Okay. So by abuse of notation, we'll simply put equal to. Okay. But what that equality is. Uh, to be very precise it is an isomorphism because when you simply write the ring they are actually polynomials but if you want to think of them as functions you must evaluate those polynomials so there is a difference and it is to it is this isomorphism is to signify that dis that difference but then one forgets this and by abuse of notation keeps writing equal to okay fine so so this much is uh, this much is uh, uh, clear then I want to explain why this and this are one and the same why are this and this one and the same see that is that is quite uh, that is again quite clear because if you look at the look at the way it goes you see what is see if you take x okay and you in x if you give me a sequence uh, of irreducible closed subsets. So these are all uh, irreducible closed in X. Okay. Then you see what these will correspond to is see mind you X is sitting inside X itself is an irreducible closed inside uh, A N. X is L itself is an irreducible close inside A n okay. So if you go to the if you go to the polynomial ring the ring of functions on A n which is k x1 etcetera xn okay then you see this x uh, as a closed subset of A n on this side will correspond to the the ideal of x which is prime okay mind you that uh, this there is an inclusion like this okay because all these are all closed in x and that is further closed irreducible closed in a n okay. So what will happen is you will get something like this you will get ideal of ideal of z m uh, uh, which way so it, so it should go the other way so ideal of z naught will contain uh, so it will be like this um, ideal of so let me write it proper containment ideal of uh, uh, zm minus 1 and so on proper containment ideal of z0. So this diagram on this side translates to this diagram on the other side okay and of course you know why this is because we have a uh, uh, on this side to that side if you take the if you apply this i you know that is a uh, that is a bijection because it is inverse is given by z you know this bijection okay this is a bijection uh, between uh, radical ideals and closed subsets and if you are only looking at irreducible closed subsets then it is a bijection between irreducible closed subsets and uh, uh, prime ideals okay and of course it is inclusion reversing alright. So see what see what this will tell you is that in the earlier lecture I defined what is meant by height of a prime ideal what is the height of a prime ideal you start from that prime ideal and then you take a descending sequence of strictly decrease the descending sequence of prime ideals okay and take the maximal possible length that is the height of the prime ideal okay. So you know if I start with ix and if I take a strictly descending sequence of prime ideals uh, uh, starting from ix and going down all the way to the smallest prime ideal which is 0 mind you 0 is a prime ideal therefore uh, because these are all integral domains 0 is a prime ideal. Uh, polynomial ring is an integral domain so then what this will tell you is 
that the uh, the height of that plus this m okay and if i take the see here if i take m to be maximum if i take the maximum such m i'm going to get dimension of x okay dimension of x is is actually supremum for all such m okay and suppose uh, as in this case if what this will tell you is that if the dimension of x is say a, uh, if if the dimension of x is say r okay then you have a maximal uh, chain here which is length r okay that will correspond to that will tell you that this has length r okay uh, i mean uh, this will be r okay plus you know if i further continue because i because of maximality this will be uh, if i further continue it to go all the way down to zero which will give me the height then if i add both i should get the dimension of the polynomial ring okay if i take this okay with m equal to r which is the maximal possible and then if i further go down okay from i of x to 0 that part will give me the height that plus this r will give me the uh, dimension of the polynomial this is just this is just as this is just reflection of this fact that you know height of a prime ideal plus dimension cruel dimension of uh, r mod p is equal to cruel dimension of r I wrote down a formula like this last time that is if r is an integral domain which is uh, uh, finitely generated as a k algebra then and p is a prime ideal of r then the height of the prime ideal plus the cruel dimension of the quotient is equal to the cruel dimension of the whole ring that is just a reflection of this fact that I explained just now. So moral of the story is that the dimension of x will be actually if the dimension of x is r then the height of i x will be n minus r. So the dimension of x is r here this will correspond to height of i x <coughs> is equal to n minus r because r plus n minus r adds up to n which is the dimension the cruel dimension of the whole polynomial. So the moral of the story is <coughs> the uh, uh, but then but then what is n minus r n minus r is the dimension of the quotient but what is the quotient the quotient is a ring of functions that is why the dimension of the topological dimension of x here corresponds to the cruel dimension of the ring of functions okay that explains why these two are equal okay do you understand that so i am <coughs> i am just trying to give an explanation why these two are one and the same right so uh, I will stop here and then we will continue the next talk.